Terrorhawk, stay on this channel. This is an emergency. Coming back and um, trying to remember all the voices has, has been a, a bit of a challenge because it, it was 32 years ago that we originally started recording the Terrorhawks. But it is a little bit like riding a bike. Um, uh, once we hear them, um, it just comes back. And, you know, after about a couple of hours uh, of, of rehearsing and recording, I, I think we were all completely back on the track. It was, um, and that's the weird thing, because then it only seems like we were doing it yesterday. And, you know, as we keep harping on, it was 32 years ago. Actually, it was very funny playing Zelda again, because it was as if I'd never stopped playing her. Uh, it was very easy, very easy indeed. Mary was a little bit more difficult, because Mary was 33 years younger, in those days and uh, so that's a little bit more tricky but Zelda no problem at all. <laughs> Finding the voices after 30 years has been a little bit challenging um, for all of us I think uh, because you carry in your head what you think it is but actually when you listen back uh, we were played um, uh, DVDs you know and I managed to look at a few episodes before we we came up here to record and it's not quite how I remembered it. <laughs> so I actually doubted the recordings rather than my own memory. But, uh, yeah, you know, once you've got the prompt of how the original was, getting back into it is OK on the whole. Uh, you know, we are all 30 years older and, and the voice does change. And I think most people's voices soften with time and maybe get a bit more resonant. And sometimes when you don't want that, it's, it's, it's difficult to lose that. Well, taking you through one or two of the characters, um, Sergeant Major Zero, who is good fun, um, obviously originally was played by dear Windsor Davis, but he's unable to um, work with us. Um, uh, so actually, having I'm having to do an impression of of, of you know an old pal of mine. Uh, who has one of the most distinctive voices on television. He certainly was, and of course, he is a sergeant major, and, oh, mm, uh, and he's a cheeky chubby, uh, and he, you know, he, he likes to be a little cocky. Um, uh, that was quite a challenge to actually do an impression of, you know, one of the characters who who I never played in the original series. Um, I hope I do it justice. Uh, Tiger Neinstein, who is obviously the head of the Terrorhawks, uh, interestingly enough, was uh, a character... When, when Jerry showed me the puppet um, of Tiger Einstein, at the time he had no hair, and he looked a bit like Humphrey Bogart. So Jerry said to me, you know, why don't you have a go at Bogart? So it was, you know, hey, Terrorhawk, stay on this channel. This is no major. And he said, nah, it's not working, not working. Uh, he asked me who my favourite impression was at the time, and I was doing a lot of Jack Nicholson uh, uh, stuff. And so I just went, Terrorhawk, stand this... And he went, great, love the voice, but it's just too laid back. Jack is too laid back. So let's just give him a little bit more oomph and punch. And then it was, Terrorhawk, stay on this channel. This is an emergency. But So it's, it, you can hear the sort of that Jack thing going on, but it's a little bit more, you know, dramatic. Well, yes, I can, I can take you through a few of the voices. Uh, uh, 101, for instance, uh, the Xeroid... Um, I can't remember what the brief was actually, but Jerry just probably said back then, "Oh, you know, he's he's a bit of a sidekick to Hero, and um, maybe make him a bit uh, camp. I don't know." So I came up with this sort of voice, you know. I mean, it is a bit, it's a bit gay, you know. And I think it's got worse over thirty years. I mean, he never used to sound quite like this, but. I think I think he was more nasal back then. We did a bit more like that. Okay, you know, um, Lieutenant Hero. I think they're coming up to Space Hawk, sir. It was a bit more like that. And now it's definitely gone a little bit more camp. So we've gone sort of, you know, uh, what is it? Greenwich Village. A little more New York. A little more sort of savvy. And, um, yeah, I can just see him sort of sashaying around in his outfit, you know. So up on uh, Space Hawk. So he's become very sort of, oh, please. It's a lot of that going on. 
So I hope that hasn't ruined it for Die Hard 101 fans. But, you know, it, it, this is part of the journey, I think, for, for all of us, that the characters do change slightly and they do... Um, perhaps they're a little, little more truthful now, I don't know. The highlights of this recording has been meeting everybody. Um, it's been playing uh, Lois, just the freedom, the, the cartoonish element of it all, the slightly heightened element of it. You don't often get to, you don't often get to play really like ludicrous characters and think I can just, I can chat like this all day long. <gasps> yeah, I loved playing her, but I loved playing Sistar and, I mean, Kate's a straighter character, who's fantastic, but you get to play bonkers characters. And you get to work with other actors playing bonkers characters. It's funny, it's really funny. And yeah, there's been lots of highlights actually. But generally, really funny scripts. Uh, slightly pushing the boundaries, but they're, yeah, they're funny scripts and funny people. Watching Robbie do the young star voice, which when I heard the, um, uh, the series you know, many years ago, I assumed to have been done digitally or, you know, with some sort of weird effect. Oh, just watching him do it in the booth, I mean, it's brilliant and it makes me feel slightly sick. Finding Young Star's voice was... Um, Jerry, I th it pretty well said, oh, I think I'll, you know, I'll leave you to it for a minute. And I was toying around with some ideas and I said... I said something, I said something like, you know, we will exterminate, which is you know, the best I could do as a Dalek then. And he kind of he saw him turn around and he said, who, who did that? And I said, well, I, I did, sir. <laughs> and um, he said, do it again. So I did it again. And he said, well, can you, can you keep that up? You know, can you read a whole sentence? And I said, well, yeah, yeah, I think so. So we went with it and, and he bought it. And that was, that was Young Star Born. And um, of course he has this obsession with granite crunches. And he's very gurgly and spitty and Sorry, I'm just all kind of dried out right now, but, you know, he's the same old character. He's uh, <laughs> as vulgar and, you know, coarse as ever, as stupid as ever. I'm afraid he hasn't got any better. No brain, no more brain cells now than he had then. When they ask me how I do Zelda's voice, I just think, well, now, I always like doing old women. I used to love doing Grandma Baggins. Actually, they put her in the script the other day. And I... Uh, it's very easy for me to be wicked. I think I must be rather wicked, actually, because I just love being evil. So it came very naturally to me. <laughs> I think that's enough now. Goodbye. <laughs> Big Finish. We love stories. Especially the ones where you die horribly, Earth scum.